four years ago, we decided to have a public health unit in looking at how the government and different organizations, the military, and even the media that gets involved when something like this were to occur. It was right uh, on the cusp of the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. It was very prevalent in the media. And we thought, you know what, why don't we do something in the schools because we're getting so many questions from the kids about it. So we decided to elevate the lesson and move into this experiential learning situation where the kids not only learn about it, but they actually get to have almost like a live action adventure game in trying to solve the puzzle. We can start to see patterns in how people behave, how they sometimes cooperate, how they sometimes work against each other in different ways. I mean, how it's the chaotic environment of an outbreak. I'm patient zero and I'm infecting everyone right now. It's a secret. Can't tell anyone. But I, ultimately, I, I think the students have always impressed me year after year with how diligent they are, how much they respond, and everyone working together to try to help the individuals infected and the community at large while they try to find a cure. First year, the survival rate was about 25%. The following year, I think two people out of 200. So it was not a good year. Last year was the first class that actually would consider a win. And they was at 51%. They barely made it. So we're hoping that this year will be better. Dr. Brown really stepped up the game of the simulation by adding the economy and students having to kind of buy food, for example, to, 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 keep, to keep themselves alive. But at the same time, they have to avoid getting infected. So all of this complexity will make it super interesting to see, to, to watch it unfold. Dr. Sabetti is literally one of the greatest human beings to ever live. So I emailed Dr. Sabetti, she emails me back, which is amazing in itself. Before we know it, we're having discussions by email. I asked her if she would be willing to Skype with our school, and then we put this together, and then I send everything to her and show her kind of what we did, and she says, oh my gosh, I want to be involved in this. Uh, and then she's really taken a leadership role, which is amazing for a middle school, you know, thousands of miles away from Harvard. But she's taken this leadership role, and as you know, she's on campus, and she's really involved in the entire layout of the outbreak itself. I am a computational geneticist. I run a lab of about 40 folks um, that are all working towards developing tools to help us in human health, particularly in responses to outbreaks. Last year we implemented the mobile app for the first time so that we could actually spread a virus over phones. And then we, this year we are, we're adding beacons, beacons that can show sort of hotspots of infection or vaccinations, uh, just ways of essentially signaling different turns that are happening in the outbreak. We also wanted to make sure that we could replicate what's really going on during an outbreak. We wanted to make this experience very engaging for students, to, that, so they feel that there's a real danger to it. So the actual rate of, kind of, of recovery is not that high, so it's a very dangerous disease, in fact. 